Hey, 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 how you guys doing out there? That's right, we are back. It is Tuesday, I believe. It's somewhere around September 21st, and I am your host, Solar Gray, and I am here, the Cinematic Sorcerer, to welcome you to the dark side of the room. Now, this is the show where we talk about being a nerd, and that means games, comics, toys, TV, and all those other things that make, well, that I got um, the crap kicked out of me for, um, for liking growing up. Yeah, we gonna cover some anime, but I'm like 20 years out of the loop, okay? I stopped being regular when Lane came out. So, um, but with that, we're gonna be talking about a couple of things, but I got, I, I have with me today a very special guest coming to me all the way from the United States Midwest. Did I mean to rhyme that? No, I hate rhymes. Y'all know this. Um, this is a good friend that I met through my mentor and their stuff. Um, she is an awesome hip, hip, hip lady as far as nerds go. So yeah, for us, she's a pretty awesome lady. I want to introduce you guys to my friend, Jenny Matzek. How you doing, girl? I, I, this is the first time I feel like I've been called hip. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> hey, you know we got you. You know we got you. So... Um, now that the people have seen yo face, yo pretty, pretty face, I gotta do all of the standard begging that I have to do every episode. You know how all this goes. So, if you guys have any questions, comments, um, y'all wanna say, wow, you always get really cool people on your show. Well, how can you tell me that? Well, you can do two things. You can show up right down here in the chat right here right here when you say hey 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 what's up hopefully we're live i'm double checking on that or you can pull up your keyboard and type in back in the deck at gmail.com that's b-a-c-k-i-n-t-h-e-d-e-c-k at gmail.com and you can always hit me up on twitter and instagram on back in the deck we're putting together the tiktok page but right now we are putting a little bit of a halt on that until we finish constructing the puppets yes i said that Follow, subscribe, do all that stuff, and you will find out. Of course, if you are part of that wretched hive of scum and villainy that we call Facebook, love you, Zuckerberg, um, then you can hit us up on Deckers on the Book. That's right, Deckers on the Book. That is the Facebook group where you can show us what show us what you're playing, show us what you're building. Give us pictures of your cosplay. Look at the stuff that we're building and playing and all that stuff. However, I do, and I mean this, I do understand that there are certain times where we are doing all of this jazz, and unfortunately, it's time that I did a little begging. And how do I do that? Well, if you guys want to help us keep the lights on and pay for these puppets and all these machines that we put together and use for all of our merchandise, it's real simple. You can help us out by heading over to patreon.com slash bid underscore p. That is patreon.com slash bid underscore p. And for the simple price of a dollar, one dollar one simple dollar a month you can help us keep the lights on now don't get me wrong we got tiers that go all the way up to a hundred bucks and i love my ten dollar donators but if you think well why should i give you all that netflix only costs 8.99 i'll tell you this we are here five to seven days a week with actual role-playing games in progress playthroughs of board games instructional manuals instructional board games movie reviews how to build stuff with one of my favorite shows to do for you people known as the hobby hall tune in on friday and we also send out really cool stuff for people and with really cool stuff i mean keychains dice rollers masks we got toys props matter of fact with the end and 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 even with all that even with all that that being a patreon is one of the only places that I give you guys permission to tell me what to talk about. So ain't that fun? And that's all you got to do is head over to the Patreon page. Woo! Much like my choice in wardrobe, the music just played me out. So 
How are you doing today, girl? <laughs> I'm I'm doing very, very good, actually. I'm doing very good. Finally, it's cooled off here, so it's kind of nice, finally, chilling, fall vibes in the air. It's really good. Gotcha. So you're in um the United States Midwest, which means when you say it finally cooled off here, I'm guessing it is down to a sweltering 61 degrees, right? <laughs> um, about there. It's about 65 currently, so 65 okay. and a lot less humid. All right. So I was actually just joking when I said that. <laughs> it's like, no, 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 really. It's about down to that much. No, it's actually around 55. That's kind of nice. And I'm just sitting up. See, um, I set up the Wizard's Tower in beautiful, sunny Southern California in the city of Los Angeles itself, where it's 84 degrees on Christmas Day. <laughs> that is just, that's just how it goes right now. I wonder, let's see, I got to, um, I got to do a little bit of checking over here because, um, yeah, I'm like looking at everything. All right, cool. I want to say what's going on to all of our lurkers in the various chats, by the way. And when I say lurkers, I mean people that are in the chats that ain't talking. That means camo heart. What's going on, girl? I can see your heart. You can't hide that 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 much. Um, we also got hey chaos bulldog. Ooh, ooh, ooh. God, I hate making those noises. Of course, Impossible Adventure Pub. Oh, uh, who was that? That's a real cool friend. Thanks, man. Um, good old Remux. And I'm double checking to see who's out there over on them YouTubes. Yeah, the YouTubes, because you know we got the YouTube thing going. And I kind of wish people would stop sending me um IMs um during the show. It's like, oh yeah, Facebook thing. What's well, going on, Impossible Pub? So um i'm glad that you were here to join us today because um i was sitting up and um you do nerd stuff right tell tell them where to oh. find you and what you do oh well i do quite a bit of nerdy things um if you want to follow me on facebook facebook.com slash jenny matisek that's jenny with an i um you i mostly get taken in a lot of nerdy stuff um with my boyfriend and i um i do a lot of stuff going to run fair play D and stuff um i also do host a podcast um i also host a k-pop podcast because one of my biggest things i'm into is uh k-pop korean pop music um yes and i yes i'm talking bts but i'm also talking many other groups besides bts i have lots of groups that i do follow outside of them um podcast called Nuna's podcast over posted over on the Metropolis Collective. Um, you can follow us over on Twitter and on Instagram at Nuna's underscore podcast. I hosted with my good friend Ginny Liano. Uh, we're on a bit of a hiatus right now, but we're coming back very, very soon with some brand new episodes to wrap up uh 2021 here very, very soon as we're getting into uh the end of the year here and getting into uh the end of the year award seasons for um the music so it should be getting very very exciting nice I think, for now our ted lasso isn't going to be getting all the awards are they <laughs> no no <laughs> hopefully not <laughs> just checking because it's been like cleaning up everywhere except oh, for my kitchen yeah that i mean was insane on sunday <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, you can also check out our backlog of our episodes too over on SoundCloud, soundcloud.com uh, slash Nuna. Um, just search for Nuna's po uh, podcast over on SoundCloud. Uh, you can check our backlog of our episodes over there as well. Um, but you can also just check us out. We have a video form of the show too over on Facebook uh, with the Metropolis Collective. If you want to see some uh, some faces to some names, because we go through a lot of groups. We go through a lot of uh, different uh, reviews. We um, review albums. We review uh, just some of the news that's going on in the K-pop world. Uh, we did a television review because we had a K-pop competition show we were covering, uh, which is a lot of the reason why we went on hot hiatus because that was a charge and a half to get through, um, especially with the stress because I had two of my favorite groups <laughs> competing on that show. Uh, thankfully, one of the groups that I follow actually won on the show. But uh, yeah, that it's it's been fun. So it's one of my passions. <laughs> I was having some technical difficulty. Yeah, totally awesome. Well, today's thing, okay? Today, today's um, today's subject. I was sitting up, um, going over the shows that I want to do, um, the stuff that's coming down over the next month. Of course, 
tis the season for Halloween coming, which means for some yes. it's pumpkin spice latte time. Um, for <laughs> some it is um it's time to open up all the boxes they've been buying all year to make their house into the haunted mansion um and of course it is the time for some to go into their closets and pull out all of their costumes because they got a lot of friends that are going to be like oh, i don't like what's at the halloween store can i borrow something from you so i can go to a party that i'm not inviting you to ah! you know um <laughs> but I'm not talking about Halloween. I was sitting up and I was looking at stuff. And as you guys know, I play a lot of games. I research a lot of games for um, for the channel. And there are a couple of games that I wanted to research on because I bought the games and I had some questions. And I found myself in a forum um, getting all of the advice that I didn't ask for. And I had to back up and I got to be like, ah, ah, okay, give me a minute. Then I had to ask myself a couple of questions as far as um, I need some camera equipment, but I don't quite know what I'm looking for. And so I hooked on to the internet, which, as we all know, is the sum total and depository of all documented human knowledge. And I said, all right, I have a question here. And I ended up getting pages and pages and pages and pages and pages of answers to my questions that weren't the answers to my questions that I needed. Um, and then I'm like, you know what? I am so frustrated. I'm like, Arr! you know what? I'm going to sit down and I'm just going to play one of my games in single player mode. And it got me thinking, Back to my days of 40K that I never played, um, War Machine, and having a lot of my friends involved in those types of things. And one of the things I kept hearing, um, oh, there's even a YouTube channel um, named after it, which was Play It Painted. And I'm like, hang on a minute. Um, do I have to use Painted? miniatures from all these companies to play these games i sat down with a game called gaslands um from osprey games it is awesome you go vroom vroom crash crash with hot wheels and um and all the videos that i saw on it i can see like one or two battle reports so i guess i gotta make some but i can see 30 or 40 how to disassemble your hot wheel repaint it give it that da, 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 look and you guys will see if you want to play certain games, the word hobby is, is thrown around. And then I started thinking, do I have to do all this stuff? And I'm like, I never thought I had to do all this stuff. And then I thought back and I'm like, wait, I did think that I had to do all this stuff for a little while. Okay. I, I really did. Um, I started thinking about peer pressure and all that jazz. And some of the stuff came to me like a bolt of lightning, you know, um, where every time people try and start stuff, we end up down these rabbit holes that um, can make a lot of new hobbies seem very, very distracting or overwhelming. In, in all honest truth, I, I look at some stuff and I'm like, do I really need to do all that to go vroom, vroom, crash, crash or airplane, airplane, pew, pew? You know, um, I know you've gone through some of this, Jen. Like, talk to me about that. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think I for sure have gone through this uh, starting to play uh, D&D when I started playing Dungeons and Dragons in college. I mean, I started with 3.5 and uh, just kind of getting a little bit overwhelmed, uh, learning, uh, 3.5, which, um, which <laughs> fortunately my first session only ended with one session and that was it. And then I didn't play D and D for a while cause I couldn't find anyone to play, um, until post college when I finally could find a gaming shop to finally play. And then it was just more just like trying to find a group to play that, you know, really didn't fit my needs. Like it wasn't like not didn't fit my needs, but just you know, it was more like, okay, cool. There are people who are playing, maybe I can join in, but it was like not the best situation for me. Cause it was like something I wasn't feeling comfortable with. Cause it wasn't like a campaign. I felt like I wanted to do, it was just kind right. of, a, you know, a campaign that was going, but 
you know, it, but it's like overwhelming when you first get into Dungeons and Dragons because it's just like, oh, there's the, you know, there's the the Adventurer's Guide. And then there's all these other books and all these other side manuals you can pull from to create your character. And it can be very overwhelming as a first time D&D player um, to want to read it all and all, want to do it all. And it's just like, you have to step back and you're like, hold up, hold up, hold up. I, this is a lot <laughs> so um which it was kind of fun at least when I got my brother started getting into it and I actually started playing with him for a little bit um when he was in college uh that he because he wanted to play for a little bit when it was uh the fourth edition and so I just got to bounce ideas off of each other and I got to create a few characters that way and got to experiment that way and then now playing with fifth edition and now I'm playing currently a campaign that's actually the longest campaign I've played that's now been over a year, um, a homebrew campaign that I've been playing um, hilariously enough with some friends of mine that I've met through K-pop, hilariously enough, uh, <laughs> but because uh, we have other very nerdy uh, uh, hobbies that we do as well. So, uh, but it is uh, been really, really fun because I mean, but it's been like at least a slower progress to that but it's just like it can be very overwhelming just yeah. to kind of like take that first step because you don't realize sometimes what you're stepping into and then all of a sudden you're just like oh my god I just well this is way too much and then I I did this is information overload that's exactly what we are talking about today you know because um again it's real easy to get caught up in that overload that information going oh my god i gotta know this i gotta know this i gotta know this um of course DD is where i start with a lot of stuff that we talk about on this channel but this applies to all of those things um it's easiest it's really easiest to see in anything technical that you might want to get into or um how can i put it uh hobbies that are based on buying more now, yes. I start thinking about Dungeons and Dragons and I teach D&D, you know, I teach D&D to kids. Um, I teach D&D to quite a few people. I'm double checking the stream right now because there might be a little bit of um, of um, complication here. Um, my stream health is just like, I'm not liking this. <laughs> um, you know, I i am i promise you guys i am in the process of um what is the term i'm looking for oh yeah um upgrading my internet but that costs money uh, money that i may not have so um so this idea of in order to get into this you have to buy the bare minimum things that's true okay there is a trueness like if you want to learn how to play guitar you have to buy a guitar i hate saying that i hate saying it but it's true because you need something to practice on however you don't have to buy the 1969 um les paul super special that was once owned by Jimi hendrix and jimmy page bled on it in order to learn an a minor um right. to learn how to play D D. <laughs> um really you need the player's handbook um that's 50 bucks okay if you know the player's hand or if you have the player's handbook that's it that that's that's the basis that'll help you create a character that'll teach you some of the basic rules um but if you've got the basic stuff and the willingness to be incorrect in the moment you'll find that there is a whole lot of purchasing and I, I, everything comes down to more man, um, to a, to an, to a place that's more easily managed. Um, it's really easy. It's really easy to fall in to a lot of these traps. Okay. Um, primarily because there is, there is a real thing that happens in any hobby that you go into because most people, I, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going to say this. Okay. Um, there is a really real thing, and I mean really real, it's a really real thing um, that gets very difficult to navigate when it comes to these things. And the first thing we have to ask ourselves the question of, 
is malice versus culture. Okay, that is a really, really, really difficult distinction to make, quite honestly. Because um, when I first started playing certain games, um, I think the very first LARPing I ever did was something called the SCA, the Society for Creative Anachronisms. Um, also known as sword-carrying assholes to people who know a few people that are in it. And it's essentially a bunch of middle-aged people get together and they buy medieval armor and rattan sticks and they put on full suits of armor, go to various places, and beat each other about the head and neck um, pretending to be knights. And honestly, it's kind of fun. But when I first got into it, so many people were telling me, oh, well, you've got to use this kind of armor and you've got to get this and you've got to get that and, and you've got to get this thing. Now, oh, you need a helmet that's doing like this? Well, you could get away with a $100 helmet, but if you were to just spend $500, you'd get this helmet that's blah. And I'm just going, cool, you gonna buy it for me? Well, no, 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 I'm just saying, you know. Uh, um, it is most definitely one of those really big things. And I know you guys, I, I know every single person watching this has been in that circle, um, especially when you're building a PC, learning, um, learning uh, a game or anything like that, where it's like, you know, I would think that I would, um, I, I, I think I wanna upgrade my video card. What's the next video card up from the one I have? Oh no, you've got to get the new NVIDIA 5000G that runs at hardly blah, 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 and uses the blood of small children to operate, you know? And I'm just kind of going, I just want to stream, <laughs> you know? And um, they're like, no, 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 because you got to understand, in five years, that thing will be garbage. And I'm like, can I worry about that in four years? <laughs> you know, uh, um, feel free to jump in anytime on this. I, yeah, I mean, I just, I, it's amazing. It's just like the amount of like people like say, well, you're doing this wrong or you're buying the wrong thing or you're, you're just doing this completely wrong. Like when you're get, first getting into a fandom or you're first getting into something like until a hobby, um, let me pull into, uh, my, K my, my K-pop, uh, uh, getting into K-pop fandoms with, uh, getting into that. Cause people like to sometimes gatekeep and say, well, you're doing this wrong. Cause you're not streaming. You're not doing, uh, all the stuff when it gets into when new music comes out. And it's like, I just want to listen to the music and <laughs> that's it. Like, I don't sometimes care about the charts or care about like oh, I do care about the charts like I like to see my favorite group succeed like that's important obviously but like there's this whole thing like nowadays where like you have to stream all the time you have to change the same song all the time constantly so it gets to the top of the chart and it's like I have a life <laughs> I am an adult <laughs> I have a job <laughs> <laughs> I have to do other things so like I can't constantly stream and like there's still other people gatekeeping over like you can still stream and stuff while you're doing your life stuff and it's like um I just want to listen to the song like I don't want to burn my phone battery to have to keep playing the same song or have to make a playlist or all the all this other stuff to, to you know do all the same it's like I still am a fan of this group <laughs> but girl it's like you have been looking at my notes <laughs> I, i'm serious it's it, that's kind of that that's that's kind of frightening with that because it is. It's... the next thing that i wanted to talk about here um is one of the biggest other parts which is exactly what you were talking about okay and mm -hmm. that oh hang on a second yeah and yeah with with that kind of thing like we were talking malice um, versus versus the culture. And mm -hmm. it's really easy for people who are already part of the culture to forget what it was like to be new and just overwhelm people. Now, that's just culture. The malice, the malice doesn't um, exactly, the malice isn't always a toxic thing, okay? Or should I say the culture isn't always toxic? But a lot of people are like, well, I had to do all this stuff to learn how to play, then everybody should. And it's like, hold up. 
you may have had to do that, but did you want to? You know, right. you're the one with the power now, so you can change the rules <clears throat> yeah, by being like the you, kind of mentor that you wanted. Yeah, it's like you you may have suffered having to go ahead and do all this like ugly work to get there, but like you don't have to make sure the people who are getting into the fandom now are getting into the hobby now have to do the same thing you had to do. Because I mean, it's it, it's ugly. <laughs> you know, there's hopefully you've created some shortcuts or made it a little bit easier for people to get into it, maybe make, make it a little bit of a smoother transition. All right. Now this is, you know, but this does bring up a really interesting place to be. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. um this kind of brings us where a lot of people get overwhelmed, especially dealing with me, not because I talk to them, but because they see me. And they have this idea that as new players, they have to one day be at my level. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm at this level because I don't have many friends. No, um, <laughs> I'm at this level just because, you know, the stuff I do turns my crank. But when getting into new stuff and we see this all the time on the forums, um, there's a lot of people who cross the line between hobby versus lifestyle. <laughs> Yes. Okay. And this is something that I learned long, 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 long time ago. Um, I worked at the Renaissance Fair for quite a few years. And I started going to Renaissance Fair because I heard it was fun. My friends liked it. And there was a certain level of partying that was happening, although drinking and drugs aren't really my thing. Um, but then... I landed a gig at the Ren Fair that was paying me $500 a week in 90s money for three days of work. Slinging That's coffee. pretty good. In, 90, <laughs> right? in, in 90s money. In 90s money. Yes. In, <laughs> oh, in 90s money. That means it spends better than it did than what we got. Like adjusted yeah. for inflation, I was kind of making like $700 a week. And again, just to work Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night. So that that was a big deal. Um, but at that point, Ren Faire had become a job for me. And I was fine with that because, um, there is a job and jobs give you money and you use money to buy things like shelter and food and all of those things that make our life worth cool. Right? Yes. Hey, what's going on, Sofa King? That's right. That exactly. $500 a week <laughs> in 90s money. <laughs> I had a reason to be at Ren Faire. I will tell you what, um, Better but, than me uh, spending way too much money at Ren Fair, which is usually what I do. So well, that's what most <laughs> people do because a lot of the people that are in Fair or Warhammer 40K or D and D or any of these things, if you go onto a forum, you'll see the ones I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. um, cross the line between this is what I like to do in my spare time into the realm of this is why I have a job. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, quite honestly, yeah. I, I play games for a living. I do this for you guys. So I have to know what I'm talking about. So it is my full-time job career thing. I'm a bobber, right? But for a lot of people, um, they have their family, their kids, and then that thing. And then, you know, when their kids get old enough, they bring that thing into, but it's their lifestyle. And I'm like, okay. Have you ever been rock climbing? Have you ever gone to the beach? Have you ever swam in the ocean? Have you done anything in the world that's other than this particular thing that you're doing? Like, does your life have any diversity? Now, if it doesn't, and this is just your jam, and I hate that, I'm, that I have to keep putting out these disclaimers. If that's what you do, cool, do you. If that's what turns your crank and gets you up in the morning, awesome, that's great. This episode are to the new people that are afraid that they have to do that in order to get involved in this stuff at all. And it's like, there is a line between all and nothing, mm -hmm. you know? Um, my player, every single player at every single one of my tables, I'm like, okay, we do this once a month. You know, I don't expect <laughs> you guys to know all of the equations. I don't expect you guys to be reading 
all of the back literature and all of the lore for every single monster from every single monster manual from D&D in 1974 to AD&D with the two volume great big three ring binder packets that have all that stuff like Oriental Adventures used to and all the stuff from 3.5 and 3.0 and 4.0 and then Rifts and then Chaosium with their Call of Cthulhu stuff and I don't expect you guys to know the differential equations between 5th edition D&D and Steve Jackson's Anomine when it comes to doing magic on a celestial level. No, no, you don't. Ah, ah. <laughs> saying all that is exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> my, oh, and I do math for a living because, yeah, and now my brain really hurts. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh. You know, <laughs> sometimes you just want to roll a roll a dice a dice a swing a axe kill kill goblin. And there's <laughs> nothing wrong with that. You know, in my, in my, in my defense, it's me it's just like backstab, backstab, backstab. I just want to kill somebody and steal their loot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and And there's nothing wrong with that, you know. But a lot of people tend to make their hobbies their lifestyle, which com which accidentally comes with, I use the word inflated, because you use the word hidden and you start getting letters from Capital One, but inflated <laughs> costs, okay? Um, mm -hmm. I know how easy it is to fall down this rabbit hole. Why, currently, if you want to play Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition, right um when i was at a game store i used to sell what i called the trinity but this was back when it was 33 dollars a book okay it's gone up since then but the player's handbook the dungeon master's book and the monster manual those are the three things that you that's the trinity that's that's the book that's and, the holy trinity of dnd &D right yeah. there um but nowadays that adds up to about 150 bucks and we have this cool thing called the internet and the internet um kind of makes it so that you don't particularly need the monster manual although the monster manual is much more convenient than looking stuff up on the wiki all the time so you have an incentive for buying it but if you don't got the money or you just don't mind putting up a little bit of extra work for what you want to do you got options out there mm -hmm. um it's really easy to go to your gm's house or to hook up with your friend that plays hero clicks or 40k or war machine or historical miniatures games and walk into their game room or their house and see the bookshelf you know the bookshelf i'm talking about right oh Jen? i know exactly what you're talking about <laughs> just see the <laughs> manual like just the whole bookshelf and just see like every single version of everything and just be like oh my god um you have everything <laughs> and then there's always new guides coming out like i get the emails all the time from D, &D beyond because i i have the i do subscribe because that's what we use currently to play our uh, current session of D, D um just to make things a lot easier for us to kind of keep track of all of our uh, stuff um my, uh, thankfully, my uh, DM has a subscription to it, so it makes it very, very easy for us to have it. Um, <laughs> so, but yeah, exactly. it's very, yeah, very you, overwhelming. <laughs> yeah, you know, you walk into the GM's house and you see the bookshelf with all of the books from that game. And it's like, it's a lot like walking into a lawyer's office and seeing all those books going, I wonder if he read all those things. And the answer is yes. <laughs> yes. They have. <laughs> yes. Yes, they did intensively um, <laughs> you know and i realized when i'd gone down that i was teaching a new player they asked me a question and i'm like oh yeah no that's in the player's handbook on page 152 and they looked at me like i was made from cheese and i'm like no i don't know the whole book by heart you just happen to have asked the most common question that i get asked <laughs> I just know exactly what page it's on so mm -hmm. i'm sorry but yeah <laughs> um but yeah, so I mean, that that really turns into that kind of thing. And, you know, the inflated costs come with, you know, I'll tell you right now, all you need to play D&D, &D, all you need, all you need right now today is one to three friends, the player's handbook, and one set of polyhedral dice. That is bare minimum. Okay. Oh, and a phone that you can get the internet on. <laughs> That's all you need, okay? Pretty much. Um, there are 
loads of resources out there not all of them are great not all of them are epic you know if you want to just run like a one-shot dungeon crawl um join the patreon and i can give you links to a whole bunch of places that you can just download a one shot from from GMs that put stuff up. Um, Drive through RPG is a great. That's not the link I would give you. Um, <laughs> Drive through <laughs> RPG is um, it's a great resource for that stuff. But it's all over in groups on Facebooks and stuff like that. But that could lead you right back down to that rabbit hole. So how do we avoid becoming one of those people? Is a question that we are going to ask. You know, but. In order to answer that question, the other thing that we have to do is look at the other parts that comes in. Now, there is something that I call, um, it, it's a curse, okay? It is a curse. Um, my girlfriend has this curse. And, you know, um, she's in treatment. She's doing fine. Um, but that is the curse of completion. That little thing I'm, in the back of your I'm head. And I'm guilty of this too. Huh? <laughs> I'm very guilty of this too, especially with my K-pop albums. I'm super, super guilty of this. Yeah. And I mean, again, I get it, man. Um, um, when I was learning music, I was a fan. And when I say fan, I mean, like, I would pick a band or a specific bass player. And mm -hmm. I didn't just want to know what was on the album that they play on the radio. I needed everything that they ever did from the beginning mm -hmm. of their thing so that I could track their progress and draw sort of a parallel line with mine because I'm a great big nerd and I like charts. But um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm in a rush. So we'll just get the first Rush album and see what, okay, Working Man, that's cool, and all that, all that other stuff. Next thing I know, I have a shelf of Rush CDs <laughs> from 1974 all the way up to 1991 when they released Roll the Bones. And I'm like, okay, now I gotta get all the Primus and all of the Chili Peppers and and, 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 and. and unfortunately, you know what didn't support my habit of completion? Your finances. <laughs> That's right, my bank account was like, whoa, you can get another copy of 2112 or you can keep your place to live. <laughs> this is exactly what the financial situation I'm kind of dealing with right now as I've um, moved into and as I have currently have a shelf I'm currently waiting to assemble to put up all my K-pop albums um, that I have currently sitting in my closet because I have boxes of them that I don't even have put up yet because I have so many of them to put up um, to display because I have so many to put up because I am a bit of a completionist and I haven't even completed um a couple of groups that i have because they have such a huge rich catalog and even for k-pop it's not that they have one album there are multiple versions <laughs> of said album because they do different uh photo shoots for every album and then on top of that there are different photo cards for every member of every group so if you get into the photo card collecting which thank goodness i haven't gone down that rabbit hole um because that's a dangerous and also very very expensive rabbit hole to get down um, if you start collecting photo cards from the member, um, especially with the pre-order bonuses and depending on where you buy your albums from, there are different places where you can get different photo cards. It's a whole very, very expensive, very, very expensive hobby to get into. So hey, I do I have understand. to remind myself, <laughs> I have to remind myself to only like limit myself to basically my ultimate groups yeah. that I, mm. I very much like appreciate and enjoy that I want to buy albums from because... I can't buy every album out there because there's just too many. Hey, I collected comics in the 90s. <laughs> so I was there. I, I was there. Yeah. For the Chris Claremont, Jim Lee, X-Men number one. <laughs> and then X-Men number one with the variant cover and the foil cover. And then the difference in the pricing thing between the comic that you buy from 7-Eleven <laughs> and the comic you buy from a comic book store. And the comic book store with the variant cover. And I'm like, damn it, I just want to read the book. <laughs> you know, I just I know, want to read the I, story. You know, I just want to read what it is. Yeah. I know as I sit here, as I got my, as I just got my latest uh, Stray Kids album because they had the limited edition and then they had the two regular versions of it. And then they had also like a CD version, which I didn't get that version because I was like, nope, I'm not buying like the CD version that has the individual members because I can't decide which member I want because I like, like all of them. And then now I'm currently waiting for my 80s albums to come from Korea. So <laughs> I am 
and I have my Tomorrow Might Together albums coming. I have another group that's supposed to have an album come out in October, and I'm like, oh, I have to pre-order them potentially. I'm just like, y'all need to stop coming out with music right now because I'm like becoming really, really broke. <laughs> oh no, make no mistake. They're not coming out with new music. They're just releasing different remixes of all the music they have. Engage, buy my book. No. Um, so. <laughs> oh, I've, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at you, BTS. <laughs> <laughs> so now that we're moving into our last 20 minutes of the show, um, let's do what we normally do here on Dark Side of the Room and look for solutions, okay? How mm -hmm. do we navigate those things? And the number one thing I got to say, all right, is don't just focus on the question that you're asking remember the reason that you're asking the question what are you trying to do um if if you've got the money to buy oh i don't know um tasha's variants to everything or something for fifth edition then go for it nice. but if you have a question that's answered in that book. Maybe you can look it up online. Um, <clears throat> you know, when it comes to me and myself, um, I love playing miniature agnostic games, especially skirmish games, because um, I don't have all that money to buy a complete set of five armies for Warhammer 40K, six army, or sorry, six to eight armies for Warmer Hordes, um, all of the stuff for Rangers of Shadow Deep versus Off Graves and all, all that other stuff, ah, you know? <laughs> um, so I like playing games under the premise that I've always played them under, which is play with what you got. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you've got some Mage Knight figures back from 2001, that's fine. If you want to, um, one of uh, my good friends, all right, Tuberculosis Jones, um, his friends call him TB. Um, I was teaching him War Machine and Hero Clicks back in the early 2010s. Okay, we're talking right after, like around 2011, and mm -hmm. he was saying how when he used to play 40k with his friends, they used pennies and nickels. And I'm like, you were the type of person I want to teach the game to, <laughs> you know, because right. pennies and nickels and all that other stuff. If you were stuck, um, in an environment. Um, that really fosters something. Um, if, if you're in an environment that fosters peer pressure, um, then honestly speaking, if that stuff makes you feel uncomfortable, um, I want you to keep my very first, um, my, my very first communication teacher's um, best advice in your head. He gave it to me. And I gave it and I'm giving it to you. I said, um, but Mr. Schwarzenegger, what happens if I'm stuck in a building and it's on fire? And he said, get out, get out now, <laughs> now. <laughs> um, if, if that, if that terrible impression stays in your head, that is exactly the point. Get out. Yes. It's for fun. The moment you're not having fun fun doing these things anymore get out um because it's not that serious it ain't that critical now there will be a lot of peer pressure from those around who are suffering from the primary business model of games workshop which is called the sunk cost fallacy which is i've already spent this much this much money, this much time, this much energy. If I leave now, it would have all been wasted. Right. Oh, it's all gone. It's all oh, wasted. My time whole life is a lie. <laughs> oh. And um, I can tell you from experience that um, no, it's not wasted. All of the time and effort that we put into these things is time money effort that we did acquiring new skills having new experiences and building great memories but when the terrible experiences start to outweigh the good memories it's perfectly fine to bail you know um 
I worked at the Ren Fair for seven years and I made some good money and I spent a lot of good money, but um, I had to leave because in Southern California, there's a lot of passive racism um, that happens at the Ren Fair. And those thousand paper cuts a weekend just started weighing on me too hard. And I'm like, this isn't fun anymore. I'm going to go. And I stopped working it. I stopped being a customer. And I will tell you something. I am so cool. <laughs> I'm so cool <laughs> with that. I've got no regrets. In fact, I still, because I was a wardrobe person there, I still make Ren Fair shirts to wear in my everyday life because I like prints at me. What? Um, and I look very good in a poofy sleeve shirt and high boots. Thank you very and much. And I, I will say, having seen you in those poofy shirts and those boots, you do look very good in those. Yeah, thank you, because I, oh. I can own that. Like, I, 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 I strut, and I still <laughs> wear my doublets in public, you know, because I'm a nerd, and because, well, anything that makes me stand like this, you know, makes me feel kind of good about myself. And that's the thing. I don't have fun at Ren Fair, but I have fun with the stuff that I did for Ren Fair, and I'll always have that with me. So that cost wasn't sunk at all. I purchased something that I enjoy. Could I have paid less? Yes. Yes, I could have paid thousands less, but I spent it. That's it. Um, you know, what are your thoughts on this? Like, have you ever I, walked away from, yo, have you ever walked yeah. away from something um, when it stopped being fun? Um, I'm trying to think if I've ever walked away from something being fun, but I know I've walked away at least for a while to kind of clear my head if it hasn't been fun, like from a fandom or something um, like say Star Wars, because I just do all the toxic, because we, we, everyone knows Star Wars fandom is toxic as hell and just like step away from that for a little bit just because, yeah. Um, and just enjoy it on your own, on your own terms. Like, don't get involved with like all the talk, like the talk and stuff. Like, enjoy it on your own terms. Enjoy it with the people you find that you have discovered with you or that you've become good friends with within that fandom. Um, like I said, I can, I am, I'm blessed. Hashtag blessed, I guess, <laughs> if you want to go that route. Um, with the this is the place I've of made. magic not religion <laughs> <laughs> something like that um but i i will say i'm i'm really really excited i'm really happy with how my stumbling into k-pop like i've been really really surrounded my into really good friends instead of fandom because like again k-pop could become a really toxic place especially if you go to the cesspool that is twitter um and people i'm sure have known about you know k-pop twitter and at least, like, the people I talk to, like, we have really good conversations talking about both the good and the bad sides of fandom there. And so it's really, cool, really good and really, really engaging to see, you know, both sides of the coin. And that's kind of makes it really, really good to be able to talk about that and make sure we can, you know, see everything on all sides and make sure, you know, and be able to say, like, hey, it's okay to step away if it's not being fun, if it's not, you're not being engaged um if it's becoming overwhelming for you because yeah sometimes these you do get a little bit overwhelmed because you just realize i've overstepped myself into this and it's just your way in over your head and you're just like it's consuming every part of your life and at that point you have to realize okay like you can't just eat like eat breathe sleep whatever it is <laughs> you really do have to take care of yourself first because yourself is the most important thing. That and is that's... exactly the point. Although I could eat, breathe, and sleep turkey legs. You know, that, that's that's something <laughs> those, I can deal with. That's, those big ass turkey legs, yeah. Yeah, that's actually uh <laughs> that's that's the one thing I do miss from my rent fair. Mm -hmm. Oh no, wait, I've got a grocery yeah. store around the corner. I'm still good. You're <laughs> um fine. you're fine. <laughs> you know, but um yeah, so I guess the points that we're coming to is Always remember the question that you're asking, okay? Because uh, one of the things I've come to take and uh, I've taken to doing because I'm old and I'm tired and I know I'm not objectively old. I'm just old by internet standards. Like, what is this 45 year old man doing here on TikTok? I mean, I know it ain't flossing, 
<laughs> I mean, I'm old by internet standards too, being 30, whatever years old. So it, it, I'm old by internet standards it, too. So yeah, exactly. I'm like, I'm <laughs> sorry that I'm no longer 12. Okay. <laughs> I can't help when my parents had sex. Uh, I can't help them. I'm a millennial. Damn it. Jeez. Oh, millennial. You guys are cute. <laughs> so, I know. Yeah, aren't we? We're so cute. I'm like, yeah, we at generation <laughs> X. We just chain smoke and know that the world forgot about us. But, um, but no, I'm seriously speaking though. Um, always remember what it is that you went in for. Um, I was looking for a part for one of my cameras today and I called up my friend who was a photographer and he's like, no, you gotta do it. It's gonna look like crap. It's gonna blah, 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 blah. And I'm just like, is there an adapter piece or not? Or how much is the adapter piece? Okay. The adapter piece cost as much as the part that I would actually need if I bought the thing used. Okay, now I know. Thank you. A 14 second answer to a three week query. <laughs> um, and that's primarily based on the idea um, that a lot of people get so caught up in the rabbit hole and I get it. There is a sense of perfectionism, especially in the 21st century where you go on the internet on any forum and there is a thought that you're not good enough. I get it. Okay. Um, I live stream, but my production value could be better. I could have producers. I could have better writers. And so I look at people like my mentors whose name I never drop on the page because I don't want them going like, oh yeah, you had to drop my name, huh? Cause they would because they roast people every single week, uh, <laughs> you know, um, or a lot of friends of mine who have made it, who have um, production teams and um, like sponsorships and all that stuff. Or I look at my writing and then I, I listen to people like Patrick H. Willems and Lindsay um, uh, and, and, you know, Lindsay Ellis on YouTube. So it's real. And I have Instagram, the platform of people you're never going to date wearing clothes you'll never afford going to places that won't let you in. <laughs> and, um, mm. and I try and stay off of Twitter because I actually try to feel good about myself during the day. Um, <laughs> and it's really, really easy to get caught up with, well, I want to be on the same level as everybody else. And this is the standard. And it's like, whoa, there is one thing of if it's the standard for the community and is the community standards beyond where you want to go. You know, um, I came to this conclusion back in the nineties when I was working to be a professional bass player and I would practice everything I got my hands on. I was practicing eight, nine, 10 hours a day. I got a couple of studio gigs. I learned some stuff from other things and then that stuff became the standard and in order to keep my job i had to constantly upgrade my skills to stay ahead of everyone else and then i said you know what this isn't fun anymore <laughs> this is this is too much work my fingers are always sore and i've got some bald guy that kind of looks like a turtle yelling at me for not playing on his time <laughs> sorry sorry i it's it's I'm Appreciate still the reference, scarred. though. <laughs> yeah, still. Appreciate the reference. Yeah. Um, so at that point, I still play music, and I'm still a pretty good bass player. I'm not amazing. I'm not Davey 504 or Charles Berthound, but I enjoy playing, and that's why I play. And I'll never be Critical Role. <laughs> I will never be as good a GM as Matt Mercer. Why? Because I don't want to be. I'm, I'm not that level of a writer. I'm not that level of a voice actor. Um, again, he's, he's an amazing human being. And one day I hope to be as nice and understanding as him. But um, see, you missed your line. You were supposed to say, oh, dude, you are. You're totally great. <laughs> but you are. I mean, I'm just <laughs> ah, you dropped that. the line. Let it go. It's too late now. <laughs> yeah. It's too late. Ah. Mm. You know, <laughs> um, yeah now to answer vixen's question i was dragging okay I, I was upset i was really upset um but all in all there are certain levels of playing games where i want to go there are certain levels of video production where i want to go i mean i never want to be stanley kubrick as a filmmaker i'm happy with working for asylum 
you know, Sharknado, uh, Sharknado versus Mastodon Part 5. I want to make it in my garage, you know. <laughs> um, you know, but that's where I am. That's where I have fun. That's where I, I want to instill joy. Um, and I think I can make a living off of that. But if you guys want to listen to your K-pop, read your comic books, play your D&D, do some photography, use stuff on a cell phone, always question how far do you really want to go with it and if you want to go sky's the limit if you choose to do that good on you good on you but if you don't want to do this if you don't want to sacrifice friends family free time sleep in order to be the very best that no one ever was you know um you know if you don't want to be that person you don't have to be that person to participate in the things that you like doing, regardless of the stuff that you might learn on the internet, okay? We're here on the internet right now, and I'm telling you, just do enough that makes you happy. And if people are like, well, we're gonna do the great big tournament that uh, came down from Britain that's playing in Vegas and all that stuff this weekend, it, you, you have to have won 15 games to get in. So mm -hmm. I'm just saying I need three legs on my pairs of pants when it comes down to playing this particular game. Good for them. And you know what? If you want to go and cheer your friends on and all that stuff, but you don't ever want to be that type of player, you don't have to be. And if your friends don't play with you because you don't want to get that level, I promise you there'll be somebody out there that does, even if you got to teach them yourself. So any other thoughts with that, um, Miss, uh, Miss M? No, I think you've wrapped it up just well. I mean, that's pretty much what it is. I mean, it's it's your life and just make it you know it's your it's your hobby it's your fandom make it what it is it's it's you just be you that's the one thing like i think we just have to remember going through life be you like that don't be anybody else just be you <laughs> uh you know i would rather you know don't get me wrong i get where it comes from because there is a big part of me that would like to be, oh, I don't know, um, will I am sometimes, <laughs> you know, I'd kind of like to be the guy that's married to Jamie Lee Curtis, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I'd also like to be the accountant for, um, <clears throat> you know, um, Jeff Bezos, um, would mm. love to be his accountant, <laughs> would love it, <laughs> <laughs> um, for reasons that are not legal or cool, um, I will own that and I have no problem saying it, but, um, I wanted to give an announcement um, for today because um, there is, hang on, where's something? There is some stuff that's going down. Uh, we'll be wrapping it up relatively soon. Um, but what am I doing tonight? Well, one of the reasons I wanted to get on here is because I'm doing a show um, here on Twitch on someone else's channel tonight um, because... Um, long time deckers will actually see like I run games, I do all that stuff, but a lot of deckers have never actually watched me play, <laughs> um, which is a new thing, um, which is really, really fun because I don't really get to play a whole lot of RPGs. It's sad. It's, it's a sad thing, but yeah, I actually get to play. So tonight at seven o'clock, um, I will actually be in a game at twitch.tv slash life action role play um and we will be playing um this is some really good these are some really good folks and this is life action role play they they're a great podcast um filled with good people and we're going to be playing at the purgatory cafe um and i get to play one of the gentry y'all I, I get to be um i i get i get to be a i would say a fairy but i get to be one of the fae folks so you know um yes supernatural lawyer actually supernatural movie producer but it's a totally thing and that's going <laughs> on in three hours so seven o'clock pacific time um is when we're doing the game um and we've got some amazingly talented people um, a whole lot of improv artists, writers, and just all in all, all in all, just fun people to be with. This is my first game under this GM. Um, and we talk a lot about stuff. There will be, um, there'll be, God, we're looking at a cast of like seven or eight 
Peoples. Um, and yeah, we're going to have um, some fun stuff coming down. Um, I'm actually seeing if I can pull up the link here real quick or pull up the picture. Um, but that's going to be tonight at 7 o'clock here on Twitch at twitch.tv slash life um, action role play. All one word. And um, yeah, it's it's going to be some fun stuff. Oh, yeah, I'm pulling that stuff up. If I seem like I'm rushing now, I'm really trying to beat that playoff music because ever since the Emmys came and went, it's been rushing me. <laughs> You know, because, yeah, that, ha that has been a thing. That has been a thing. Ah, here we are. Yeah, let me just uh, pull that up there. Ooh, yeah, there we go. Ha-ha. I managed to do the thing. Yeah, so hey. that would be uh, that would be tonight. Um, Yeah, <laughs> September 21st, 7 p.m. Pacific at Life Action Roleplay. We're doing the Boardroom Fake Court along with Kiri Callahan, Avon Gonzalez, Stephen Pope, Anya Monet, Ashley um, Bargy, um, some dude in black and white, Finn Pearson, Bev <laughs> Thomas, and of course... Uh, Ryan Omega is going to be the GM on that. And uh, it's going to be some fun stuff because, you know, what happens um, when the fairy courts, i.e. like Oberon and Titania, take over Hollywood? <laughs> I don't know. We'll find out what happens. But that'll be fun. That's, that's going to be tonight. And um, yeah, these are the things that we're looking forward to doing and a lot of the stuff that we are going to be putting down so um we are back um and broadcasting um on the daily i am seeing what i can do on making sure that we can have a dark side of well, dark side of the room is up and running uh, i'm working on hobby hall um i have to come up with a couple of things um to make in front of you guys so if you are on the patreon let me know what you want to see us build we've already done boats and castle walls and things like that so that's a fun thing um but yeah oh yep see see told you told you that's where they were coming well um i want to thank um well, i, I want to thank my friend here my good friend uh Janay, uh for coming <laughs> down in, in the game are uh, coming down to talk to us today, Miss Matt Matisek. Uh, tell you. the people where they can find you. Well, again, you can find me over on uh, Facebook, facebook.com slash Jenny Matisek, just Jenny with an I. You can also find me over on Twitter and on Instagram. Um, not as often over on there, but you can find me over there at Chaos Bulldog. Um, you can also find me um, in my show, New the Nunes Podcast, again, where we talk all things K-pop with my wonderful co-host, Ginny Liano, um, over on the Metropolis Collective or on Facebook. Um, you can also check us out over on Twitter and Instagram at Nunes underscore podcast. Don't forget the underscore. Um, you can also check out the backlog of our episodes over on SoundCloud as well, soundcloud.com slash Nunes underscore podcast. Um, and we will be back soon with brand new episodes as we're getting geared up towards the end of the year with the award seasons for uh, K-pop here. So it should be exciting. Awesome, man. And thank you. Like, thank you very much for showing up. And thank you guys for coming in and sitting it out. Um, please, please, por favor, if you guys are watching on Twitch, you can use your Amazon Prime subscription to, well, Subscribe to us. Like, seriously, become a subscriber with your Amazon Prime subscription. It will cost you nothing. Cost you nothing. Nada. Niche. Nil. Zip. Zero. And if you guys are watching over on YouTube and you like what we have to say, hit a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and hit that bell notification. And if you didn't like anything that we talked about today and you thought, man, here's that black guy again just talking and talking and talking about being a nerd, why don't he shut up? Then... Push subscribe and hit that bell notification and talk to me in the comments. And then I can listen to you and we can talk and maybe I can buy you some ice cream or something like that. And if you guys really don't want to go through all that jazz, I totally get it. Um, but if you'd like, you could send us an email over at backinthedeck at gmail.com. It's B-A-C-K-I-N-T-H-E-D-E-C-K at gmail.com. Hit us up on Twitter 
at back in the deck on Instagram at back in the deck. And if you are part of that wretched hive of scum and villainy known as Facebook. Love you, Zuckerberg. Send me a sponsorship. Um, hit us up on Deckers on the Book, where you guys can show us the stuff that you're listening to. We can talk about what you've been watching, like My Hero Academia or some other anime thing that I haven't watched, but I know some people have read almost as many mangas as there are episodes of One Piece for it. Uh, what you're building, what games you're playing, all that other stuff. It's a fun community, and I don't let in any jerks. And yeah, I moderate all that stuff. And of course, if... If, if you really want to help us out and you want to help us keep the doors open, I appreciate that. And only if you can spare it, okay? I totally get it because times is tough and hero pay is ending because the United States of America suck. Or if you are in any other country or on any other continent, um, then feel free. Hit us up over at patreon.com slash bid underscore p and become a patron. For as little as a dollar a month. One dollar a month. And that can help us keep the doors open. And you know what? Um, our Patreon was built by something claws. So everybody gets something. All right. Everybody gets something. I don't care if it's a keychain. I don't care if it's a sticker. But everybody who's on Patreon gets early access to our YouTube videos. Um, I'm writing skits. I'm writing. Um, and believe it or not, I'm even building puppets to do stuff for our Patreon that you guys are really going to like. And yeah, you guys are going to go on the Patreon, right? And you're going to be like, how does he have the gall to ask me for $100 a month? I will tell you, we do our own merch here, okay? All of our own merch, which means if, like, let's say you hit the $100 tiers, you get one of these guys, okay? at the hundred dollar tier all right this is a wearable wearable mask Ooh! that is 3d printed molded and copied and hand painted all by me and you get one of these every single month along with our dice rollers and um our various dice things um the solar gray cinematic sorcerer miniature that you can use as a proxy in any game like monopoly or life it's also a miniature that comes unpainted so if you like painting it yourself you can just do that um along with our little saw keychains our little saw pop figures and of course the thanks and admiration of a wacky wacky wizard that lives in california but with that, I'm going to say, um, hit us up, send me an email with any questions or comments or anything like that. Email is right here if you guys, uh, if you guys need that one more time. But it, um, I want to thank you guys for coming down today, for sticking out through the episode. And if anybody tells you that you can't like what you like because of the circumstances of your birth, be it race, religion, creed, gender identity, sexual orientation, your disability, your budget, and I mean that because your budget, because the trailer park is just a mile or so away from the projects, you tell them that we said to take those cards and put them back in the deck. This is Solar Gray, the Cinematic Sorcerer, saying thank you for joining me, and I will see you next time on the dark side of the road.